You're watching The Mic Check on every Monday afternoon at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. Hello and welcome everybody to this week's Mic Check. Today is a really, really special occasion. We have with us Carol Monda. Now, Carol Monda has worked on stage, TV, film, and microphone. Her voiceover clients include McDonald's, Discovery ID, The Guggenheim, New York Historical Society, HSBC, Red Cross, KLX, Tenna, CityCorp, the AFL-CIO, and several American and Canadian symph symphony orchestras. I'm sorry. Um, since 2010, Carol has been the voice of the Turner Classic Film Festival. She has also narrated over 450 audiobook titles in 20 genres for Penguin Random House, Harper, Macmillan, Hatchet Book Club, Blackstone, Metabook, Recorded Books, Dayan, Brilliance, Highbridge, and Audible, among others. Hmm. Carol has been honored with two Audio Awards as well as Audiophiles Earphones Award and a Sovas nomination. In addition to her professional acting and voiceover career, Carol has designed and led classes in acting, voice and speech, scene study, audition techniques, text analysis, accent reduction, audiobook narration, and a broad range of commercial, promo, and narrative voiceover. She has served as an adjunct professor in both commercial voiceover and narration at NYU's Digital Design and Film School and has taught Voice and Speech 3 at NYU's Tisch School for the Arts. She's been a high school acting and voice instructor as well as a production director at New York City's Professional Performing Arts School and at Belvoir Terrace in the Berkshires. Carol has also taught in and around Washington, D.C. at Theater Lab School of the at Theater Lab School of the Dramatic Arts, Roundhouse Theater, Capitol Hill Arts Workshop, Bethesda mm -hmm. Arts Center, Woolly Mammoth Theater Company, and Second Genesis. Currently, Carol mentors, coaches, teaches classes, and directs demos independently, and at Edge Studio and the Voice Shop in New York City, and at LA's Global Voice Acting Academy. She has appeared as a presenter, panelist, and teacher at conferences such as VO Atlanta, VO Mastery, Audio Publishers Association Conference, and countless workshops with the inimitable Johnny Heller. She is a proud member of SAG-AFTRA and serves on its National Audiobook Steering Committee. Carol holds a BFA in acting from the Catholic University of America, and she's here to present to us about promo reads. So Carol, the time is yours. Wow, Michael, you just did a great promo for me. <laughs> <That's a laughs> uh, kind of. I fluffed up a little bit here or there, yeah, but that's going to the voice well, actor, right? Yeah, for the evening. So <laughs> that, that's right, exactly. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and good night. <laughs> <laughs> was, well, this isn't I about me. Know. You're the star of the show. I know. I just, that, that was so long. I'm so sorry you had to sit <laughs> through that. It was great. Could just well, you've done a lot. Read it. I have. I have. I'm old. Um, <laughs> so, I don't believe it. Oh, it's true. Um, so, hi, I'm really happy that that I'm seeing brand new faces. I love teaching uh, almost more than than doing the work. I mean, it, it's it's there's nothing like seeing the the light bulbs go off and also just <laughs> creating with people. And you know, when you have ideas together, uh, I, I feel like it would be a great thing just to direct, actually, uh, even more than I do, because because that's when. You know, it's it's not sort of a dynamic of who's who's being taught and who's teaching. It's just sort of we're working on this project, you know. Um, so anyway, it makes me very happy when I have a new uh, uh, group of people to meet and hear from. Um, and, and so I'm looking forward to, to that today. And I I do have a little bit of a slice of, of life for each of you. But um, Michael, do you think we'd have time just to hear you know, uh, in the moment a bit about everyone, or since you guys know each other, it's best to just move on to, to some of the promo ideas. Um, <laughs> well, uh, it, it's, it's up to you, whatever you would like. Uh, the time is yours. So if you'd like to hear from, from different people or, you know, you can go ahead and select whomever you'd like and ask whatever questions you want. Well, actually, I think, Maybe maybe a, a better way to do this would be to, um, uh, to hear from people who have done promo, if 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 there are any, uh, and uh, and then we can just kind of go go from there. I'll I'll just uh, ask a few things about your experience, and if and if you haven't done promo, uh, if you're interested in it and why you would be. I think that would be a good segue and a, and a way for, for me to get to know you guys a little better. 
Okay. Okay. Well, I, 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 uh, hi, I'm Janet. Hi. Um, hello. <laughs> um, I, um, uh, I've never done promo, but I would like to. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. And, um, uh, let's see. I, I used to do some voice work about 10 years ago, uh, small success, not, not a lot. And then about a year and a half ago, I thought, come on at my age, at my age now or never. You know, so I've been um, very, I've been somewhat semi-successful. I, um, I, I've done about, I don't know, 20, I don't know, 27, maybe now jobs, voiceovers That's since great. last year. And I just, uh, wow. won the, I just won the award for um, uh, best international voiceover performer performance Yay. by a female in London. At the One Voice Awards. Uh, I know, I know, but you know, you still, I still have to knock. You, I'm, I, I'm tickled pink, but you know, you still have to work really hard and knock on doors every single absolutely, day. Absolutely, absolutely. If if mm -hmm. your head gets too big, you can't fit into the booth. No. <laughs> <laughs> That'll never happen with me. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. But but so, what about promo uh, might interest you more than than? Uh, I don't mean that you have to be more interested, but what what about it specifically uh, makes makes you interested as opposed to the other genres? Uh, well, well, I have other genres too. I mean, I, I love yeah, dramatic. Sure. You know, I, I I I'm excellent at senior citizens, but I, I listen to some of the promos. I listen to you. Um, who did I? Uh, like Randy, Tom, you. Randy yeah. Thomas. You know, I I just love the way they speak. I, I know. I, I just I just like that uh, it happened one night. I I, I would like to think I can do it, but I might not be able to. Uh -huh. you tell me today. Ah, uh, sorry, Jan. You know, it's not going to happen. Don't do it. You know. <laughs> oh yeah, that's going to definitely be coming out of my mouth. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't. Know. <laughs> it, so it sounds like actually you're 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 hitting on something that many people don't think about, which is often anyway, not always. There is a story uh, with with promos. It's a teaser, maybe, but it's still that still works out to be a story. So I love that you're that you're hitting on that that notion of you know the once upon a time element. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else who? Uh, has experienced or, or, or wants, you know, has a particular thought about promos? Um, I've done promo. Uh, I work for a television station um, oh. outside of voiceover. So I've done promo. We're a local affiliate to a station that has like 17 channels in the network. And, uh, um, you know, so we hit, we hit a lot of major markets, but at the same time, we have a small market affiliate that hits at least well all of east tennessee and most of kentucky and wow there is we, we, huge transmitter anyway um <laughs> so i've done <laughs> some and uh it, it's been a little while um you know you can still hear my voice on the station when you turn it on but it's just been a little while and i'd like to just knock the rust off <laughs> you know right yes sure exactly polish yeah. it up and that's uh, great that you have experience uh, yeah because i also I, I do a lot i'm i'm a character actor so i love to do animation so uh, yeah this helps me to sharpen my edges a little more in an area that's not animation or character acting related right and and yet there are some elements i'm sure all of you you know would agree that that uh especially with regard to character work you know sometimes these promo i mean of course if we go way back to to the yeah. you know la fontaine school it's <laughs> you know, he certainly was playing a character yeah. yes i mean yeah. i can't believe i even was bold enough to attempt to imitate him but everyone knows <laughs> I, I know i can't but um but it's always fun. Um, so, so th there is, you know, sometimes I think even though there are people who focus on one genre, there is such a Venn diagram uh, with regard to these different kinds of voiceover, um, you know, categories that, um, that sometimes we get stuck in or, or, you know, maybe even willfully stuck in, uh, a particular kind of feel or read or, 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 uh, you know, business model even. And, um, and sometimes it's good to sort of shake it up and, and think, oh, it's really not that, you know, far away. Um, like I do not do animation. I think I've done maybe three 
animation jobs and they were all very fun, but I don't pursue it because I, I just feel like it is, uh, yes, there's a Venn diagram, but it's, it's, um, just some kind of, uh, I don't know, supernatural power, I think that a good animation person has. Um, and, and so, you know, it's, it's important to know what you are good at, but I also love the idea of stretching your muscles. So yes. I appreciate what you're saying. Okay. Any, anyone else? Um, I haven't done any promo work uh -huh. and I am interested. Um, mostly I, what I know of promo is um, I watched a couple of the um, Bio Buzz doing creating promo, yeah, promo uh, demos, and I found that it was very interesting seeing how each spot had its own kind of style and and like one was kind of edgy and one was you know fun and wild and then the other one was you know very serious and there was one that was spooky and that's kind right. of that was kind of cool. Yeah, it is. It's so diverse, really, even within its own niche. Good. That's so that's so nice to hear. And also, are are you the one who so <laughs> do you have two pictures? Is one with I a have puppy? two pictures. Okay, yes. okay. Just puppy, wanted to make sure. Which is where my voice is, and one's oh. just because I wanted to have a video, at least when I'm not. Oh. Speaking. Oh, I see. Well that that puppy is I want to do a promo just for that puppy. <laughs> um, it's beautiful. Uh, okay, so so, and I know you'll be reading for me, um, so I, I'm looking forward to that. But I I uh, I do I, I hear I hear what you're saying. The, you know, the draw is there, and sometimes um, just seeing the way they're not only making the demos, but but as you said, how how many different kinds there are, and and what it takes. I mean, that's one sort of uh, idea that, that I wanted to uh, just entertain for a moment, which is the, you know how they always say commercials sell and narration tells, or mm -hmm. the narration will tell and the commercial will sell. Um, the promo sort of does both. And it, it crosses that, it crosses that line a little bit of, you know, yes, you're selling a show, not a product or service, but you're also, but you're also informing people about, you know, when and where they can see or do or be at an event, a show, et cetera. Um, so it's, it's kind of a nice, I think it's a nice mix. And then when you get to see, oh, it could be for anything from a scary Halloween thing to, uh, you know, a sports, a, a major, you know, engine driven sports kind of <laughs> <laughs> feel um you 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 can see how well you can stretch your muscles in that world mm -hmm. anyone else I've, I've i've sort of done promo work oh i um, hope so <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> good frank <laughs> um yeah no I, I i've done a little bit of promo work with uh, uh I, i've worked in radio for a long time uh, okay and uh so i've i've done promo work just at the stations i've worked at but i've yeah. never I've never done a paid for professional voiceover promo yet. Gotcha. I'm, I've been doing professionally as a freelance voiceover artist for about four years. And hmm. I'm still feeling my way along, just trying to figure out what niche I fit into the best. Uh -huh. And um, when I saw that we had a chance to read for you tonight, I thought maybe, you know, this might be my chance to, to nail down what it is exactly that I'm, I'm meant to do because I think, Really, I am meant to do voiceover, uh, but it's just not one hundred percent sure exactly what it is I'm 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 really good at. Mm. So that's kind of one of the reasons why I'm really looking forward to reading for you tonight is to kind of feel my way along. I think I can do, you know, radio uh, promos and that you know the the hard you know for FM rock stations and and that sort of thing. Sure, uh, I guess we'll find out. But that's that's <laughs> that's my big thing. That's so. your thing. Um, Great. A couple of things. Um, I know. Well, I sound too radio-y, by the way. I, I get that. All in your time. other, in your other, uh, when you, when you try to do, for example, uh, you know, a narration uh, documentary kind of thing, or if you, if you I, practice. I have, I have done those. I do, I do e-learning. Uh, oh, you I, do? Okay. Yeah, I, I do some, I do some e-learning. Uh, I've done an audio book. Um, okay. So I've done those sorts of things, but um 
I mean, what I really, really enjoy doing, especially are those, uh, you know, Sunday, 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 the, 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 the yes. <laughs> you know, yes. those things where you really get to growl and, and, and have that um, yeah. concert promotional things, you know, where you're, you know, get your tickets now kind of thing. Uh, you know, yeah. really blah, 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 where you get to get right down here, you know, do that kind of stuff. <laughs> uh, I love doing those kinds of things, but um, I've always had a yen to, I've, I've always wanted to do things for, you know, TCM or network TV or, or whatever. I've always wanted to do that sort of thing, but just never quite sure if I had what it took or whatever. And hmm. the time and, and the money to be able to afford to find out whether it's, it, it can happen as well or not. So that's yeah. the of it sometimes. Yeah. Um, okay. Is there anyone else who wants to, Hey Carol, this is Russ. Hey Russ. Yeah, Russ no is one the reason I'm, here. I'm yeah, sorry. Sorry, I don't have a camera. I'm out of town and I got the wrong computer, so I'm not even in my booth. Um, okay, no problem. Wedding out of town. But what I want to say is the thing about promo. I've I've done auditions for promo, which have been really fun. Um, haven't got any gigs from it because um, there's so much competition out there. Yes. But um, the thing I like is it's voice acting, you know, instead of voice over. Yes. You don't have to. Hold you don't have to do a whole book, you know, you just get into the character and do it and get it over with. And it was awesome. And, you know, yeah. maybe you get on your next character on your next audition. So that's what right. I say. Yeah, that's good, Russ. I, I think um, uh, I'm laughing because, you know, I, I remember being in an audition and uh, at, at, at an agency and this um, peer said, oh, my God. God, I, I'm, I'm auditioning for an audio book and I'm just, I, I just, I can't stand them. And I said, well, so what are you going to do? How are you going to approach it? And he said, I'm just going to really suck. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and, and in, apparently he did, or at least, you know, if he didn't, he didn't get the job, but, but I, I, um, I don't even know. Oh, because you said at least it's not a book and it made me think, yeah, there are, there are some genres, no matter Venn diagram or not, the, the, uh, draw to them can vary widely um, and thank goodness there are enough genres that we you know we will find yeah. our niche like Frank is you know sort of trying to to do uh, ah, and by the way speaking of niche because I heard niche earlier um, so this may come from a book standpoint and it may seem like it's out of uh, the the topic um, and it is to some degree but it but it applies with promo uh, the the pronunciation of words, generally speaking, comes from the American dictionaries for voiceover. If it's an American piece, of course. Uh, if, for example, you are doing a book and and you know it's someone from uh, uh, Ireland, then of course you would go to the Cambridge or the Oxford dictionaries, etc. Um, but Unfortunately, in my opinion, the American dictionary has as its preferred pronunciation, which means the first one, uh, niche, not niche. So every time I have to say niche, I mean, by now I've gotten used to it, but um, uh, it, it, it hurts because, because I think it's a prettier word to say niche, and it is the original way. You know, it is a French word, so... It's, it's very hard, but I just wanted to throw that out there that, that um, even something as fundamental as that can become part of your research for any kind of audition that you do. But certainly if a promo is sent to you, usually it, I mean, of course this varies, but I still would say usually there's a fairly short form you know, script that you're working with. And sometimes you are promoting something with a, a, a celebrity name or a name who is a celebrity whom you don't know uh, or a place or even, uh, you know, some kind of new name for a, for a film and the name is, you know, Bagulamara, you know, and you don't know how to pronounce it. So, uh, of course, you can ask the the directors, the writers, whoever, uh, you know, you can, but uh, generally speaking, we still have to do some, you know, some looking in the dictionary. So I wanted to make sure that um, that's something basic to cover. Um, the, the I'm, English. I'm located in Canada. <laughs> right. So, so every, every, every now and then on the mic check in a good natured manner, I am ribbed 
because is it data or data? Ah. Is it niche or niche? Is it Mazda or Mazda? Is it NASA or not NASA? You know what I mean? So yes. I, I, I'm always cognizant of that, that sort of thing. And in this case, I said niche because I'm not reading copy, but oh, that was you. Yes, exactly. right. You know. Exactly. Yes. I, I, I decided that I shouldn't do that just to not confuse, you know, just so I wouldn't be confused. But, um, but yes, uh, I think if I, if I, uh, let go of that fear, I would probably say niche conversationally. Uh, but yeah, that, now that's an interesting thing too. The Canadian uh, pronunciations can be different, but they're still, they still kind of uh, ride on an American dictionary, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, like you so, said, though, depending on who's supplying the copy. Yes, mm -hmm. of course. That's right. Um, so uh, I think just generally, um, is there is there anyone else who wanted to give me a little? Well, I guess I should insight. since I'm the one reader who hasn't. Oh, I'm basically <laughs> I'm, I'm basically uh, new to voiceover, and I've oh. gotten a bunch of training. I've uh, been Good. on the mic check for a while. I started up like a little over a year ago, but I had some things come up, come up in real life, broken ankle, mm. and now I have a four year old running around the house, which always makes things entertaining. So yeah. Uh, so I really haven't done a whole lot, and now I'm in rebooting mode and getting training, and hopefully I'll actually launch for real now. Um, Good. I'm looking at focusing on uh, more e-learning type stuff, storytelling. I'm supposedly good at that. Okay. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to try my hand at just about anything except for maybe the animation. I don't think that's me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It is uh, good to be able so to. anyway, that that's where I stand. Great, thanks, thanks. And uh, uh, of the of the stuff you've done, which do you prefer, or which do you, what gives you the most uh, happiness or fulfillment, or do they all? Uh, I would say at this point, it's too early to even tell. Good, good. That's a great answer, actually, because you know you don't want to. There's first of all, there's no reason to to have a favorite. Um, in some ways that's limiting, but it just, it, sometimes I ask so that I get a sense of what you're, how you're, you know, wired a little bit more. Um, so, so Janet is asking who's speaking. Oh, I was wondering who that is. Oh, oh this was Leonard. Leonard. Oh, I don't have you on my, oh, on I'm my, off your screen. Yeah, I don't if, see Maybe it. if you do a, the gallery view or the speaker okay. view. Or, oh, okay. Yeah, you, sometimes you just got to drag it out and make it a little bit bigger. Yeah. Oh, Leonard? Yes. Yep. Oh, hello, darling. I see you. <laughs> oh, okay. I was, just, I was just curious who was speaking. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. All right, so uh, I guess we'll just, you know, kind of launch in. I would prefer to, um, you know, do just a, a little bit. Michael and I talked about, you know, just some of the elements of promo that are a bit different. And of course, again, there's always going to be crossover. But um, but the number one thing for, for uh, you know, a, a, a differentiation to me is, the emotional and uh, kind of uh, connective tissue of selling without selling, um, and and of course that that varies. You know, now by the way, I'm not including trailers as promos, even though a, a good promo demo can absolutely have a trailer on it, um, uh, and and actually. It's true that that I would even consider trailers promos, but uh, they're so they're so nichey uh, or nichey that that um, <laughs> I'd rather deal with you know the the uh, the kind of work that we do have a chance of getting. <laughs> I'm, I'm, really, I'm kind of kidding, um, but uh, but if you did if you did take other promos, television shows, uh, events. Um, I think one big difference is timing. There are often scripts where you you have graphs uh, for how much time you have to say, you know, this line in, and so it's it's kind of a new moment. Even though uh, 
commercials oftentimes, and even other kinds of narration will will sometimes tell you what the spec is for for timing. It's it's not quite as broken down oftentimes as as promos can be. So it's a good thing just to get into the habit of, you know, looking at maybe five lines and uh, challenging yourself to to do it clearly and compellingly in seven seconds and then in 10 seconds, et cetera, um, just to get used to the idea of what, what that is, what 10 seconds is, like many of you know already or feel already what a 30 second spot is versus a 60 second spot, right? Um, and and while you're not asked to uh, count it out in your head while you're speaking, um, it, the the idea with promos is that you know again they have such uh, small chunks sometimes that let you know what they need, um, and so it's it's just good practice to get more exacting, you know. Mm -hmm. um, Another thing that's different uh, is, you know, so we've got the, it, it sells and it tells, it slices and dices. Um, <laughs> there is a timing issue. And also the idea that um, you are, you have to remember that even though it's not a product or service, I have to remember, I don't mean you, uh, that you, uh, the sell part is less about, um, you know, a direct, uh, you know, tease or seduction as it is an excitement and an invitation uh, such that the person really is so curious about what that show is or that event is that, that you know, you've, you have in, sen in a sense sold it, um, but it's because you've gotten behind the show or the idea or the event, the event. Um, and so y y there, there's a really fine line uh, between having this sense of, yes, it's so exciting and it's fantastic and it's great, but also that there's something grounded and rooted about it. Even, even the Sunday, 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 uh, you know, it has that sense of, you know, we love it, you know. Um, so that's, that's just something that it, it's, it's fine in theory to talk about, but you'll, as you read and hear reads, you'll, you'll, I think hear more of what I, what I mean, that there's a, a, a dual obligation, I guess, to, to excite, but also to, to, uh, do that as authentically as possible, you know, um. So, and if by any chance you've decided that you wanted to bring in your own copy and there is trailer material, material that is fantastic. I mean, it's not, it's not that that's off the uh, books. It's just what I uh, offered up um, are, not, are not trailers because they have even more of a specific kind of, you could do a whole class just on trailers. Um, so why don't we just do at least, uh, you know, one or two or three, would it be three, <coughs> Michael, and in a row? Would that be the best? And then talk a bit. And, um, again, I think that's it's, what we said. Yeah, uh, I, I believe it was you wanted to hear some reads and then discuss it for a little while. So Exactly. Yeah, good. Go for it. Um, all right. So, well, who of, of the uh, victims, who, <laughs> <laughs> who would like to, to volunteer first? I can go first, this Russ. Either one. This Russ, Russ? Yes, yes, sure, Russ. All right, I was just going to read the first one here since I've been practicing it. Okay. Wait, let me just pull that up. PCM Friday Night Spotlight? Yeah. Good. All right. Revel in the horror as TCM and host Bill Hader take you on a journey into madness. There's nowhere to run. There's nowhere to hide. And... All that's left to do is scream. The TCM Friday Night Spotlight, 16 of the scariest movies from the 1930s to 70s, every Friday night in October, starting at 8 p.m., only on Turner Classic Movies. Nice. Okay. Uh, so, oftentimes, this is one thing I think is uh, universal with, with spots of, of almost every kind. And that is the music. What what do you imagine the music will be? What do you imagine the camera work will be? Those things will set a nice context for you. Um, and uh, so, of course, with Halloween, well, you tell me. What do you what do you see and hear? 
spooky oh. music, mm -hmm. possibly um, the host or person reading is in some kind of costume with blood on them or, oh, you know, something great. like that. Yeah, yeah, I got, I'm sorry. Um, maybe, you know, a close-up, maybe a, a scary background with a coffin or something like that, spider webs, something like that. Yes, yeah, sure. Um, now, uh, also, what, so keep that in mind. Um, okay. And then uh, also, do you um, imagine an audience, like a particular audience of one, in, 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 in fact, oftentimes that's the best way to you know think of think of it even if you know the target audience is you know uh broader um and even though you know it's going to countless many even if the target audience is small like you know this is strictly for 15 year old girls or what have you um do, do you can you picture someone uh you think would be a great candidate to 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 freak out with this piece <laughs> Um, someone that you'd want to scare or somebody that's like into horror movies and would be yes, like that, that really yes yes yeah Ble be. yeah I got some millennial friends so <laughs> okay great <laughs> um, I think it's timeless too right we horror was one of the first yeah. genres almost I think um, okay so so uh, the other thing about this is promos in general, but specifically this one at least, uh, they give you a little more opportunity to milk stuff than certainly a narration. Um, and in a way, even a commercial, because you've got a little more drama, a little more of a story, you mm -hmm. know? Uh, so so try, try just like, pulling out all the stops and le letting the um, <laughs> feel okay. be there even more. Okay. What um, what about the speed? Was that about the right speed? Oh, ah, good. Um, you could take more time. You know, now I would say that in this case, uh, I believe this was a thirty second. Uh, so oh. it, it 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 wasn't one of those things that had uh, graphs, uh, but uh, certainly it was no more than it may have been twenty. So if I were you, in fact, if if any of you want to sure to try this uh, later, uh, time yourself and see if you can, if you can get it in, in 30 and in 20, you know? Okay. I think I was pretty under 30. I was probably about 22. Yeah. You were, you were pretty fast. I would take, I would take more time. Part of the, I mean, okay. Here's the second thing that, that we didn't really talk about yet, but, but, uh, and it will come up more, but, but the words, <laughs> the words, uh, especially when you're starting with the word revel and mm -hmm. then the phrase is revel in the horror uh, that that just sets the tone right there not just the music and the camera as you imagine or even the millennial to whom you're speaking but but this idea of really enjoying and relishing and that to me says you have perfect license to to again to milk it a bit so you can take okay. more time yeah good that sounds better Good, good. All right. Give it a shot. Revel in the horror as TCM and host Bill Hader take you on a journey into madness. There's nowhere to run. There's nowhere to hide. And all that's left to do is scream the TCM Friday Night Spotlight, 16 of the scariest movies from the 1930s to the 1970s, every Friday night in October starting at 8 p.m., only on Turner Classic Movies. Nice. Um, better. Much better, yes. And of course, you know, some of it was uh, even more than you needed, but it was still better to have too much. You know, that whole thing that, that yes, less is more, but you can't get to less unless you do more, I think. You yeah, can I hear that always, all the time. Right? Yeah. You can always pull back, but, but you got to give it first to know what yep. your limits are. You have to exceed them, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, which is fun. Say it again. Which is fun. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm sure that's uh, one other thing that is relevant and, and pretty pervasive in promos that um, even if it winds up that you're somewhere in the middle of the, uh, you know, really just go for it and the you know informational data or data 
uh, that that still it's it's it should be it should be just a lot of fun. And if you're not having fun, it probably means you're not you know mining it for all it's worth. You know. Cool. Yeah, but that was that was a nice adjustment. Thank you. Yeah. Um, for the next time you, if you were to work on it, I would just say, um, you want to break it down just a little bit into, you know, first the, there's always a beginning, a middle and an end, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but if you can establish what's happening in the middle and off, and oftentimes you'll notice that the middle has a, a few moments or beat changes if you're if you're an actor or or transitional moments anytime there's a shift in action topic mood uh certainly if the the camera angle uh shows hater with some like freaky funny face uh that's going to be a new you know a new opportunity um so from from the beginning after madness uh the the middle begins with there's nowhere to run there's nowhere to hide all that's left to do is scream um you can you can um, think of that as and and you did you made it different but uh you can you can even focus in more on um what do you want to activate in that person even though even though he or she loves horror um you know part of what what makes it so enjoyable or or um compelling is that th there is that sense of you know it's yes you're in the safety of your living room watching this but but even you should feel a little like ah you know yeah. so you can scare us you know a little so, a little so, um, it seems like there's a big turning point where it says the tcm friday night spotlight absolutely sure that's a turn in all of your promos but um when you get to that point should you still try to be scary or just go ahead and kind of you know read it so they understand it better or what what's yeah the... that's that's a great question so so uh to me this is like a uh the uh penultimate you know it's not the end the end is you know almost like the tag um only yeah. on turner classic movies but but this is uh certainly you know the beginning of the end i would say so i think you would want to ease into it if you have time or lines to ease into it i think that's a great opportunity to take so that you're not already feeling like and so i'm just going to reiterate which is oftentimes what an ending is it's a it's a reiteration of what you've just been saying um but there's still opportunity here because you've got three full lines to come off of that you know the all that's left to do is scream and you know let that also i would almost you know i i'm a big advocate of marking up the text and changing and adding and deleting punctuation as you see fit for moment for message for flow um so i would say you know in in my mind i would think all that's left to do is scream, dot, 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 wait for it. And here it is. Here's where you'll scream. Um, this is what it's called. But I still think you can have some of that fear factor um, in there, especially when you're identifying 16 of the scariest movies. Mm -hmm. Then when you literally are just disseminating information, it's not like you can, you know, you don't have to change your voice completely. Like now I'm a normal person every Friday night in October, you know, it can yeah, be, yeah. but really you don't have to. It's just best to, uh, again, ease off, wean uh, off the, 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 you know, heavy high fun drama into and now with uh, a semi you know not so scary voice i'm going to give you the data so that you can actually enjoy the the horror that i'm talking about so, so that's kind of what they're expecting when they see a an audition is is for you to make that change there i think so yes i mean now of course as you'll see there are so many different promos with so many different expectations but when you see something that does have a beginning middle and end and that's the these are represented only by one line maybe two then it's a pretty straightforward shift but when there's an end or a middle you know any of those structural sections um you can look at them as as their own sort of beginning, middle, and end, and and that you want to go somewhere from, here's the name of the thing, and here's what it is. It's 16 of the scariest movies, and then 
here's when it is at what time. And of course, okay. so you're just easing, easing out of the character. Indeed, kind of that's exactly it. Yeah. But I think on the last line, you kind of can ease back into the character, maybe. I don't you know. know. I think that often, now this is not always true, but I think that often it's like there's a tiny bit of this expectation that no matter what kind of promo it is, if it's for that network, it's going mm -hmm. to be said in a similar way as oh, okay. it has been throughout its, maybe not yeah. history, but its okay. most contemporary kind of, what's the trend lately? Only on HBO. For some reason, the O is always, you know, landed and low, which you know, it makes sense. It's a great vowel sound to exploit and raw. Um, but but I think it's the same, only on Turner Classic Movies. Um, so again, if you were doing an audition, it might be a good idea to go and listen to how they were saying that and try to kind of follow yeah. the pattern. Yes. Now, I, I, I am a big believer in, in research and looking at what the current um, feel of a, a particular promo is or, or anything, frankly, if it's a documentary, I, I always like to go to, you know, uh, the, uh, uh, some kind of, uh, what is it, the, oh my gosh, it suddenly escaped me. Sure, sure, that's a great example. Um, but if I'm, if I'm listening and thinking, I have to imitate this, of course. Yeah, I know that's, what you're saying. Yeah, you want to emulate, maybe, uh, or at feeling. least that's, the... that's right. It's yeah. it's like it's the same idea of I'm singing a song as a cover. I'm not trying to be the Beatles, <laughs> but I but but I still need the same rhythm and metronome and 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 some yeah. of the same heart and and guts of the of the feel of what it, it was intended to be or what it has uh, kind of landed as being. Yeah, that's a good analogy. Definitely. Good, good. Well, thank you. All right. Yeah, absolutely. Good. All right. Who's, uh, who would like to go next? Go next. Okay. What are you doing? I am, uh, I was thinking of the own network one. Okay. Good, good. Okay. Oh. See, lost all the stuff that I wrote. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I only looked at it once briefly, so. Oh, okay, good. That's good. Tomorrow night on OWN, their lives took a turn they never expected. But for these three women, before they're ready to face the world, they must conquer the battles within themselves. Breaking down the bars. All new episode tomorrow night at nine, only on OWN. Sometimes it would be nice if they, if they shook it up a little with the, instead of the only, you know. Yeah. Um, sometimes they do, but but there are so many only on NBC, HBO, yes. Uh Okay, so what was this about? Um, this was about. I'm gonna guess this is. I. <laughs> it seems like they're like somehow they maybe they ended up in prison or they had some challenge in their life that they that they expected this beautiful life, but now it's uh -huh. you know it's all falling apart kind of thing. Right, right. So yes and yes, I think is right. The but particularly the bars, the, yeah. the jail. Yeah. Um, so so that that tells us uh, something about the mood, right? And therefore yeah. the tone that you want to strike. So um, first of all, <laughs> uh, you may not know anyone who is into tabloid television, uh, <laughs> but but one of the one of the universal draws is that it's always a little bit sensationalized, mm -hmm. um, just like even tabloid magazines, right? They, they have a little bit of, you know, uh, exaggeration or at the very least, you know, uh, something for shock value. Uh -huh. Okay, so um, there's that. So that's kind of like going back to what I said before, the, the acting part uh, mm -hmm. of, um, you know, at least tonally establishing what it, you know, what it should be, but then also bringing some kind of authentic sense of, of the piece so that it's not just like, you know, I'm exploiting for the sake of sensationalism <laughs> or women who, you know, genuinely had hard times, but it's still the, the teaser, the promo is not 
for them. It's for we who, in a horrifying way, in some sense, want to see their pain and drama. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, so, so let's take it again and think about the, the, the jail. And yes, of course, that you're not making fun of these three women, mm -hmm. but that, um, but that there is high drama. You're, you're, you're doing this again for the sake of the audience to become, um, really, you know, drawn to mm -hmm. how, um, you know, almost edgy mm -hmm. that, that kind of story would be. It's not your average woman who, you know, the, whom you meet okay. has, has been to prison. Not, not very many anyway, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. All right. Yeah. Tomorrow night on OWN. Their lives took a turn they never expected. But for these three women, before they're ready to face the world, they must conquer the battles within themselves, breaking down the bar, breaking down the bars. All new episode tomorrow night at nine, only on OWN. Much, 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 much so much better. I'm sure everyone would agree that you allowed, first of all, a little bit slower, and you allowed a little bit more of a feeling, uh, a feeling of, um, you know, ooh, drum roll, please. Without it being like their lives took a, you know, so <laughs> exploitive that yeah, good. Um, now, uh, I'm I uh, I think you would have done this on your own uh, with a third read, but but breaking down the bars is a new moment, right? It's the yep. uh, okay, so so it wants just a titch of a, of a space between mm -hmm. uh, themselves and breaking, mm -hmm. um, and then. Um, in some sense, you could think about the idea, which I think you were re really getting toward, uh, building the suspense. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it starts pretty, pretty um, uh, compellingly, I think, mm -hmm. you know, lives taking a turn that were, was, you know, really a surprise. Mm -hmm. um, but that also, now that that's happened, you know, th there are things that they have to deal with um, before they really even can, uh, well, imagine themselves getting out of jail, breaking down yep. the bars, right? Yeah. Um, good, good. So um, I, I thought that that was a much better uh, point of attack where you, you teased out the moments. Um, mm -hmm. And you can just keep, I would just keep working that way, whether it's promo you're interested or, or you know, mm -hmm. or not, it's, probably a very similar idea of looking at again the text what what's um what's this structure uh beginning middle end and then mm -hmm. internal to those sections where are transitional moments but really ultimately what what's it doing at any given moment do you yeah. know what i mean yeah by that oh good yeah because sometimes i say that and i don't know if it's the best way to describe the notion of it being an active thing. That's one of the mm -hmm. other things I love about promo. It's often, you know, it's not like, yes, if you're selling Crest, uh, you're, you're selling and you love it and your teeth are white and everybody should use it. Um, and with narration, oftentimes, particularly again with documentary, it's, you know, you're oftentimes unfolding a history or a mystery or something that is a story. But with this, it's kind of this great, um, you get to dig into the active aspect. You're not just giving narrative data. Mm -hmm. uh, you're you're also um, priming us mm -hmm. for for the for the moment and the feeling and the uh, suspense, etc. Um, so I, I I think that's something you can you can really enjoy and exploit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Great. So, who's next? Hi. <laughs> Hi, is that Nathan? Nathan? Hi, yes. Nathan. Yes. And yeah. I, I've picked the investigation discovery. Um, I do a lot of bright and cheery comedy stuff. And oh, so I, I decided to pull back and do something that is completely not like myself. Good. good. <laughs> That's really great. That will give me a good stretch. Okay, good. Yeah, that's always the way to do it, especially in this context of having, you know, a safe family around you, you know? Yes. 
is great. Okay. Okay. Real people, desperate times, desperate measures. What would you do? Indecent Proposal, all new series premieres Saturday, August 22nd at 10, only in Investigation Discovery. All right. So sometimes I do this on purpose. Things that have typos or that have unnecessary grammatical marks that, that, that may be perfectly grammatically correct on the paper. But yeah. if you were to honor them, uh, sometimes it chops you up or makes you interrupt yourself almost, you know, uh, yes. give, give a herky jerky feeling to it. So um, I think it's true indecent proposal, pause, all new series. But Usually it would be said all new series premieres, you know, you'd still want to take it slowly enough that we understand the, the difference between series and premieres because those okay. are tricky words to hear right strung together. So it's, so it's not a good time to speed it up or, or blend it too much, but I don't think you need the comma. Um, now that's just my opinion. You could be like, nope, I love that comma and I'm going to sell it, you know, great. That's great. And obviously it's there. But sometimes, for example, in investigation discovery, that's not what it meant. It's just that the copywriter was like, okay, this is yes. draft nine and I have to get it out four minutes ago. And so I, I'm not going to proof it. You know, yes. the final one. Um, My precious little head was telling me that didn't make sense. And I went through right? it anyway. <laughs> well, but, but uh, sometimes, you know, it's, this is a little more obvious than some, but sometimes it's like, geez, I mean, you could say that you know, the, not this, but, yeah. but a, a, another piece that looks like, well, that can't be right, but you, you don't know. So you can, you could ask, or if you, or if there is no one to ask, you can, you know, give two reads on the audition and, and just do one exactly as, as they've written and one the way you know it should be. <laughs> True. Um, but anywho, uh, so the real people, desperate times, desperate measures. Uh, this is such an interesting, or, or I should say, uh, I mean, it, I think they're all interesting, but this, this is an unusual uh, structure uh, comparatively. Um, there's not a lot of information, but there's an expectation that you, you, you change with each one, that, that, that each one is separate, that, that desperate times and desperate measures are different things, and that real people is a different thing. So you want to say them uh, slightly differently. Um, and, and I think that this is a great opportunity and it's completely up to your imagination to decide, okay, the, the, I think the camera would be like all these people. Um, now, of course, you can only imagine what indecent proposal means, right? It could be what we think of, what our gutter minds think, no, what, what the phrase, you know, indicates. Or it could be like, it could be just all kinds of indecent proposals, like, hey, if you rob this bank, I'll, you know, uh, I don't know, wash your clothes for a month. I'm kidding, but you know. Um, yeah. But let's let's decide it. it's something a little bit, you know, uh, blue. Um, so let's say we're seeing these real people who look very diverse, right? And whom you would never suspect would be involved in either purchasing or selling themselves or their bodies, um, you know, uh, or, or their, uh, or, or committing a crime, let's say that, um, so you you can you can really imagine these very different people. Of course, all adults. That would be creepy if you know. Um, but uh, but the desperate times, desperate measures. You know, I don't know what they would do, but obviously they want us to see a kind of mini. Uh, 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 what's that word? A micro story of um, here are these people who were led to these desperate choices um so so it's almost like in three lines it's a it's a story of real people who otherwise would just be you know uh living quote unquote real normal lives um but something happens and so they have to react in a in a very desperate way so let those let those build and and unfold as a consequence think consequentially you know the consequence of um, 
of, of, of times and then therefore measures. Um, okay. that's the, that's the whole beginning. Um, and it's, and then it's the, what would you do? I love whenever there's an opportunity to invite the audience in, uh, and, and, um, you know, even though we don't know what the heck it is, we can start to infer, uh, by, by the camera, by the music and by your words. Um, and so the, 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 what would you do could be an indictment, like don't judge these people. What would you do if you had, or it could be, what would you do? Because probably you would, you know, uh, go get a second job or whatever. Um, but, but it's a nice, it's a nice opportunity to be completely, uh, to interpret it and therefore deliver it in your own unique way, but with some choice made about is it is it an indictment or is it genuinely like, uh, God, it's a really difficult thing. What would you do? I don't know what I would do. You know, whatever that is, yeah. let it be mm. different and separate. Um, and then, of course, just the, the here's the data. Um, which, which, again, you can, like we were talking with Ross, uh, it, it, the... At, at the very least indecent proposal and all new series that we want to know, you know, everybody loves the word new. Did you know this? This, this was a, a test uh, for commercial, uh, for products, for advertisement that, that new and improved really are <laughs> things that make us go, oh, oh, really? Um, so, so that's something to be, you know, just slightly given extra love. But then the rest is a little more straightforward. Okay. I think I talked way too much just to say, <laughs> do it again for me and uh, okay. <laughs> make a story out of it. <laughs> okay. Real people, desperate times, desperate measures. What would you do? Indecent Proposal, all new series premieres Saturday, August 22nd at 10. Only Investigation Discovery. Nice. See, that was great. I didn't need to talk nearly as long, I'm sure. But I'm glad that you found that distinction of, uh, number one, those first three lines. That was the most important thing. But also, I really believed what you said, back to the grounding thing. No matter how tabloidy or sensationalized or even, you know, just Sunday, 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 big sell, hard yeah. sell. Um Still, I, I want to know that you genuinely are asking me that, even if it's in a goofy way, uh, that you're, you know, you're genuinely being goofy, you know? Yeah. So, I, 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 Nathan, that was nice. That was right, a thank you. nice adjustment. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, great. So, uh, that was three, right? Yes. So, let's, let's just... Uh, talk about, you know, one, one of the things that I've been talking about that I didn't say outright I would be speaking of is uh, looking at structure, looking at beginning, middle, and end, but also looking at how to mark that up, how to identify and separate out, not just, you know, the uh, structure of, of, of its uh, form, but also the content uh, of if, if we've got this first three lines, real people, desperate times, desperate measures, um, what, you know, what can tell us that there is something new coming, we can mark it. <laughs> we can mark it with some kind of transitional uh, symbol. Some people put it literally a T for transition. Some people put a B for beat change if their background is in theater, because that was a big theater thing. I think Uta Hagen or Maybe it was even Stanislavski, but it's been around a long, long time. Beat changing, meaning, meaning the same thing I described earlier. Any shift in action, tone, mood, uh, you know, topic. Um, so that's something that I just want to point out that is transferable. Not, it's not just a promo thing. It's, it's uh, uh, something that you can really use to get the most out of all of the ways in which three lines can be delivered. And it's so easy to think, well, it's, it's about motor oil. What's, uh, how varied can it be? But if, but if the first line is about where it's sourced and the second is about that it's you know environmentally friendly and the third is about it's going to make your car purr, those are 
those are three different, very, very similar, you know, very uh, still on the same road called motor oil, but, but with, with these different elements or aspects of them. And those you really want to be teased out. That's the difference between this like generic, you know, uh, whitewash of a, of a piece um, and really trying to, again, get under it in, in terms of how it can change and, and vary and what, why it's continuing to speak in a sense, you know, what's it doing now that it didn't do the last time. So with these next, with the next reads, um, maybe right now, just look at what you're going to be reading and just make in your mind, you know, a mental note of if you don't have a, if, if they're not on paper, these have not been printed for you or, uh, I mean, if you have not printed them out, nor uh, can you uh, mark anything up on the computer, um, just think about what, not just the beginning, middle and end, but what are they each doing? What's, what's the reason for them being and what's your objective in saying them? I, I enjoy using the idea of an infinitive verb, like with this, and that can be an overall thing, like the overview is with this piece, I want to like spook light, which by the way, it wasn't written correctly, they, they changed it. Uh, so I kept it what it was, but I did want to mention that too, that sometimes uh, the, the very first piece in the promo copy list, uh, it says, uh, TCM Friday Night Spotlight. Well, it became Spook Light, which was weird. Like I kept thinking, why isn't it Spook Night? But anywho, um, that that can happen too sometimes. But the point is, yes, you can you can see that and think, yes, overall, I want to you know uh, titillate them and you know scare them, but not in a you know in a in a fun way. Um, but then you can talk about rebel in the horror is this this guy we all know and love for his comedy takes us on a journey into madness what an interesting surprising thing and everybody loves a surprise or an uncharacteristic you know um role played by someone we think we know you know so that's the first tease is hey guys you know uh uh trying to think of another like you know it would be like Milton Berle doing uh you know a Vincent Price film you know that sort of thing very unusual so that's the first you know uh selling point but more to the point of this notion of separating out these these uh objectives specifically um First, it's, you know, I want to draw you in. That would be mine anyway, to revel in the horror, blah, blah, blah. Then I want to scare you. There's nowhere to run. There's nowhere to hide. And then I want to, um, you know, uh, what's the word? Not just tell. That's not exactly as compelling a verb as, as something like uh, guide you. I'm going to guide you to the name of this and the, you know, the, the, it, the information you need to you know, to get the most out of it. So that's a, it's a silly example, but think of that as you're looking at what you're going to be reading for those, for those things. What do I want to do at any given moment? And that will almost always pair up with uh, the beginning, the middle, and the end. So anyone else like to uh, volunteer? May I try my arrow? Go ahead, Janet. I'll go after you. Okay. Okay, <clears throat> I, um, I'm I'm thinking um, Nat Geo. Great, great. Okay. Hmm. I'm scared. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's see here. Okay. He's known as the Antichrist, the Emperor who. Bo <laughs> Hold on. Sorry. Let me start again. He's known as the Antichrist, the emperor who burned Rome to build a place worthy of a king. He is attributed with the number 666, the numbers the New Testament gives Satan. He is remembered for one great disaster. But could there be another side to Rome's notorious devil? God. So... Uh, <laughs> No, 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 not about your reading, about the topic. 
Uh, oh, even yeah. though it seems to me, it seems very innocuous personally. But anytime you deal with anything that even you know smacks of religion, yeah, um, it's it's an opportunity to, um, to to you know to balance. When I was talking about the balance of the acting and the grounding, that that you want to be reverential to some degree, even if it's about Satan. It's not like you're worshiping Satan. I'm just okay. saying that you're you're giving these. Uh, storied narratives we've grown up with and associated uh, great trauma and turmoil with, uh, you know, their their import. That's all. Um, so, but then, of course, there's the other part, which is for most of the audience, um, which is it's going to be sensational. It's going to be uh, extremely interesting to to um, learn the history of Nero, and and uh, certainly, you know, he himself is not the the religious uh, figure. So we can we can um, we can give him a little hell for burning down Rome. You know, we can we can uh, um, judge him a little bit vocally. You know, okay. Okay. Um, and um, and I think too. At the end, there is that nice surprise, which everybody, I think, would agree is is something delightful to experience on film, on stage, anywhere. Right? If if we if something, if there's a twist, uh, we go, oh, it perks our ears. So mm -hmm. so who knew there could even be thought of as as um, you know anything other than he's evil, you know. Mm -hmm. So at, at the end, there. Yeah, like he, they, like he might have a nice side. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's funny. That's right. Yeah. All, all right. So let's let's just try that again with again that sense of a little <laughs> bit more of the. Um, this is a big a big deal. It's it's historic, but it's also, uh, you know, we're gonna we're we are gonna invoke okay. the the most dramatic thing we can, which is Satan. Okay. You know? Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Oh, I can never hear myself. Okay. He's known as the Antichrist, the emperor who burned Rome to build a place worthy of a king. He is attributed with the number 666, the numbers the New Testament gives Satan. He is remembered for one great disaster. But could there be another side to Rome's notorious devil? Nice. I'm glad that you had the uh, the energy and air to to uh, make that an actual question because sometimes you know uh, we we don't quite get to you know we we hint at a question but we don't uh, yeah. really ask it. Okay. And you did. Um, good. I I appreciated the the uh, power and somber aspect that that I was trying to to evoke. And um, I would say there's one thing that I heard that seems maybe uh, very small, but I think it might, it might be something that will come up for you. Um, the emperor who burned, yeah, the, the emperor who burned Rome to build a palace worthy of a king. Um, so yeah. in, in, what's that? No, I'm like, yeah. I don't know how to read that. Yeah. Okay. Well, because it's not that it isn't that easy. It seems it, it's, it's, it's certainly a straightforward sentence, mm -hmm. but, but it has these two elements, right? He, he burns this thing so that he can do this. So we don't want to have the emperor who burned Rome to build a palace. You know, we want to, we want to stop just for a second at, Oh, Rome. Oh, it was burned. You know, before we go on, Oh, the reason was this. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. So it could be oh. the emperor who burned Rome to build a baba ba ba ba. Okay. Just a minor thing, but that sometimes is is the kind of sentence that really gets you because it's not it's really it's not a compound sentence necessarily, but it does have conflicting or or, or I'm sorry, dual mm -hmm. elements to it, actions mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. is it attributed or, or attributed? <laughs> you know, uh, attributed is usually what, what I would, uh, say, because, you know, uh, uh, 
wait, okay. no, attribute, no, right. hold on. Right. No, it. attribute is, is the noun. Sorry. So attributed okay. is the verb. Yes. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry. Um, but it's a weird, I don't know. Yeah. It's a weird word to use. I, I yeah. think, I think it should be something like he's compared to, or he's, uh, you know, uh, com uh, what's the word? Uh, He's, well, it doesn't matter, I suppose, mm. but but the idea is that um, to me, it's more like he's uh, associated. That's the word I was thinking of. It mm. would be, I don't know, a little more sensible to me to say he's associated with the numbers. But great but, you know, example. It's such, yeah, it's a great a example of like that's tricky. What did you say? I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I'm interrupting. I shouldn't. No, no, please. Um, it's just such a weird read. He has attributed the number 666, the numbers the New Testament gives Satan. Well, the New Testament. I, it, it's like, I can't make the New Testament awful. It's the, the New Testament. I know. That's, it's, that's it's a trick read, man. This is exactly why I even mentioned this to begin with. Because if, if we only had Satan, it wouldn't be quite as important that we be somewhat not reverential again, but 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 just we know that there are going to be there are some sensitivities among certain religious sects, or at least about certain other religious elements. Right. You know. Mm -hmm. um, so I know that there are some people who are are Christians who would be offended by the fact that uh, that anyone would be given the name uh, or the number or or an association with a figure like Satan, who's actually a human, an emperor, just an arrogant, you know, uh, tyrant, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. um, so, but, but you're right. It's a, it's a, it's a very fine line, you know, huh. but, but you handled it well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So who else? I know I have. Oh, me. who have we not heard Frank. from? Frankie, Frank. Me. Frank. Hi, Frank. Hi, how are you? <gasps> Good, how are you? Any better it would be illegal. It's <laughs> <laughs> great. So I am torn whether ah. to do Frank FM because oh, pff, it's Frank. Exactly. Uh, or whether to do Destination Unknown. Have you any thoughts? Well, I guess my initial impulse is because you've done radio, we should do destination. However, have you done this kind of radio? Uh, seems like you must have done imaging or branding or something in addition to DJing. Uh, well, yeah, but never, never for other stations. Just no, I've worked at or whatever. Sure, I still think we should go with something that's just not exactly in your wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. Okay, so destination unknown. What it is? All right. <clears throat> Introducing the one and only network that bridges the gap between the real and the supernatural. Destination Unknown. The only network featuring evidence of ghosts. The only network featuring encounters with aliens. The only network featuring legendary monsters. Join us on a journey to the only destination featuring an exclusive lineup of unsolved mysteries and supernatural shows. Coming Halloween 2017. Now, even just the way you said Halloween was scary. And that's what you want. You want you want to find even vowels you can exploit that just help help the entire word be colored. And mm -hmm. that that was that was such a nice example of that. Okay. Um, now, uh, one of the, the reasons that I, I, I like to work with this piece is because it has the, uh, the classic structure you often see in commercials. A burger isn't a burger unless it's a burger from Burger King. Mm. Um, this, the only, the only, the only. Now, there are two schools of thought. One is say the only exactly the same way each time, which is what you did. Could you try it again? doing not that. Sure. I can do that. <laughs> that was a great way of putting it. Um, so that's just one thing to, to keep in mind. And then um, I'm, I'm imagining that, let's decide anyway, that this is, you are really introducing it. It's a network. It's the first time or it's the, it's the promo for an, an actual network we have never seen before. Okay. So it's going to be a little more um, 
you know, a, a bigger unveil than than a show that we've never seen before. Right. Right. Okay. That, and then the um, uh, what I was saying earlier about you know what's going on at each uh, different section. Um, so, just just give a little more thought to. Um, I guess we've already discussed the idea of introducing this this new you know mm-hmm. network, um, and then the list, which you know it doesn't want to be a laundry list, of course, but. Um, but it is you. You can inflect or color um, uh, each each item on the list, just even by imagining what's what's being said with each. Right, the the, the difference be, uh, between a monster and a ghost. Let's say, mm-hmm. um, not huge in some cases, but if you imagine, you know, hopefully it will sound a bit. Di- yeah, exactly. Um, and then I, I really liked the join us. That's exactly what it wants. Uh, speaking of grounded, but also um, uh, expansive. You know, you're you're saying, you know, if th- we're unveiling this, and now come into the room, have you know, have some tea with us while we freak out about ghosts. You know. Okay. All right. All right. Well, let's try it again. Okay. Introducing the one and only network that bridges the gap between the real and the supernatural. Destination Unknown, the only network featuring evidence of ghosts. The only network featuring encounters with aliens. The only network featuring legendary monsters. Join us on a journey to the only destination featuring an exclusive lineup of unsolved mysteries and supernatural shows. Coming Halloween 2017. Nice. That was so, so nice. I mean, the first time was great. Um, and I, by the way, don't know which is which is better slash what would be preferred with, with regard to that only echo. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the nice thing is if, if you did get this as an audition, you would you would most often be given the opportunity to do it twice, and you might want to do both, you know, one of each. Um but but I'm just curious, which did you prefer? I like or, the or... second one better. Did you? Oh, okay. Now, I did. So... Even though the first one I did after you explained it, um, and then I realized um, we had last year, um, you know Cliff Zellman, don't you? Yeah. So yeah. we had Cliff on, and he was saying when you get into lists, when you're talking about things, uh, the NBC principle. NBC. How That's you right. Feel the inflection on each one. And after we you were talking the first time, um, I kind of thought back on it and I realized, okay, I did kind of go a little more monotone on all three as yeah. opposed to doing that, that pitch change. I just wasn't 100% sure where to do the pitch change. But when you said the only, that kind of brought it out a little more for me. So, yes, but, geez, you yes. are good. Aww. That's very nice for you to say. Um, but, but uh, it, it is, it is, tr- you know, tricky to consider that, also, the, the real echo is all four words, the only network featuring. Um, right. And that would be a little just crazy um, to, to try to do all the same. Um, mm. But, but uh, yeah, I, I kind of I think, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's great to be open to doing it the same way, if, if that's what the director wants, uh, but also being able to offer something. Something. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. If the if, if the director said no, we just want a real sort of oh. straight ahead monotone read, hammer of the you word. Can do that if you want, but yeah, yeah. Um, very nice. I I I even did feel the difference uh, among ghosts and aliens and monsters, which uh, again I think are you know it's hard. It's kind of hard to split those uh, the, the subtleties of those things, but you know, again, if you just picture it, it it helps so much. Good. Yeah, very nice. Thank you. Very nice. Yeah, thank you. All right. I think one more before we talk about yep. something else. Yeah, I'm here. Hello. Hey. Uh, I was looking at the Adult Swim one. Oh, okay. That should yeah. be entertaining. Yes. Okay. Adult Swim Games presents Robot Unicorn Attack 2, 
The mobile game that killed your free time is back to ruin your life forever with an array of dazzling unicorns and majestic unicorn accessories, formidable challenges, and spine-tingling power ballots. Attack 2 is here. Okay, great. Uh, so, do you know this robot unicorn attack? Never heard of it Number before. One? No. Okay. Um, so that would be a great, it's just a, a good example of, oh, well, what the heck is that? <laughs> you, could, you could, you know, YouTube or just Google uh, the, the show and get a sense of what is its pace, what's its, uh, its silly factor. I mean, clearly it's high because... Uh, Robot unicorns. Exactly. That's, that's, a, that's pretty countonably silly. Um, but, um, but also just this great opportunity to, to be a goofball uh, with, with, you know, the game that killed your free time uh, is back to ruin your life. That's such, a, that's such a great, you know, I wish I could say that someday um, or something that funny, you know. Um, so, so really exploit that. Ex uh, 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 let's have another word. Immerse yourself in... Um, in that idea of like uh, the the wry sense of humor kind of thing, um, and let us let us hear the uh, idea of the dazzling unicorns and accessories, um, but but not overdo not not reiterate the unicorn. You know, once you've established the unicorn, you 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 can focus on the modifiers around it, which you actually you did. Uh, you, you, I think you did tease out the the accessories more than the unicorn the second time. Um, now, uh, formidable is a is an example of I'm not sure which is the first, but uh, formidable is the is the way mm, I don't know. Many many people say it, so just check. You know that kind of thing. It's minor. Um, so. You know how I was asking, you know, just take a look at the structure. This to me is a little extra, not tricky, but, but it has, it feels like it has more than three parts or, or, um, and again, as I said, everything has three parts and sometimes, you know, that middle or the end or whatever, will have yet another kind of element to it. But what, what do you, if you had to break this down, would you, would you say there's a, a clear three-parter or what, what, what works for you? I pretty much just read them. So I don't, I don't do a whole lot of markup unless on the first read through, there's something that really confuses me or throws me off. And then I make notes on that, but uh -huh. I usually don't write down very much. Okay. But yeah, sure. And even if you didn't mark, I'm just asking as a, if you could do the analysis of the text mm. or in, in, interpreting why, you know, how it's, how it's going along or unfolding, um, what, what do you see as different uh, distinct parts? Well, the first two lines are separate. I'm there, the introduction to here's what this thing is. Right. <coughs> Second part, the next two lines are almost a joke. Mm-hmm. That's right. And, and then the array of dazzling unicorns and accessories. Let's see. Actually, that's a list there with uh, the array of things, formidable challenges, and this power ballads. That's a list. Uh-huh. But are the, you uh, connecting that? Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt. Are you sure. connecting that to the, uh, the line that starts with an array, or do you think it's a new thing? Well, that's a little tricky. I mean, the array of dazzling unicorns and majestic unicorn accessories. I mean, that's like a list within a list almost. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, and, uh, but you do think that it's also implying uh, with an array of formidable challenges and spine tingling power ballads or that it's a separate thing altogether? Oh, the array to me refers only to the unicorns to the and accessories. Good, good. I think the way it's written, that is the intention. Um, sometimes they'll they'll tell you, no, no, I meant like, you know, don't you see the ellipsis? It means it connects. Yeah. I don't know why I'm being so mean all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> but, I can take it. 
No, not you. <laughs> I'm being mean to the the fake, the imagined uh, people making fun of us. Um, so yes, I, I I think that that's true. I think that that would be different. So let that be even more different. You know, like it's it's an array of this kind of stuff, but also you know, almost mm -hmm. parenthetically, imagine yourself saying, "And it has," you know. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Good. All right. Let's hear it. Adult Swim Games presents Robot Unicorn Attack 2. The mobile game that killed your free time is back to ruin your life forever. With an array of dazzling unicorns and majestic unicorn accessories, formidable challenges, and spine-tingling power ballads, Attack 2 is here. Nice. That was very fun. I think you can tease out even more of, uh, sorry to use that word all the time, but it's my favorite kind of idea that that we've got this text there's a fantastic coach uh called anna garjuno I, I don't know if you know her but she talks about elucidating you know just like lifting the you know it's that that theory of like lifting it lifting it from the page to the stage as it were and it, and in our case the page to the mic um but uh I, I, I think that there still is more more fun you could have, more goofy fun you okay. could have. Um, and especially with an array of dazzling unicorns, it should have a very different feel from uh, that kind of, uh, yes, the, from, you know, the thing that's never going to let you get off the couch, you know. Um, but mm -hmm. now it's got unicorns. It could be like a real nice shift into something kind of Toy Story-ish, you know. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, or I think I get what you're saying. Kids, uh, kids, or at least imagination, um, so that it goes from from kind of I think a a drier, more adult joke to, and there are you know shiny things, kind of thing, <laughs> you know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Good. Thank you. Um, now, uh, why don't we? I, I there are other things I could discuss regarding promos, but I, I was hoping I could just take two questions um, before we then do the the, the next reads, um, if if there are any about. Uh, say, say it again. Say again. I have a question. When I'm, I thought you were done, I'm sorry. Yep. No, I, I should be done. Go, <laughs> go for it. Um, when you were talking to Janet and you said you liked the way she asked her straightforward question, um, I've heard other coaches say, and maybe this is because they're talking about commercial and we're talking about promo here, that a lot of the questions are rhetorical and you yeah. don't expect an answer and they shouldn't be asked really that much as a question. Yes. That's Whereas right. you kind of said you liked the way it really sounded like a question. So it's kind of contradicting from what I've heard. Yes. Yes. Uh, so uh, number one, just keep in mind that there are, there are many opinions, and uh, just because I suggest that that a question be authentically asked doesn't mean it's it's uh, the best choice or even the correct quote unquote choice for the most compelling read. But I do think that there is a very big difference between, uh, let's say, um, hmm. Um, Disney World, why go anywhere else? You know, it's almost like it, it's not only not a, an uplifted question, it's sort of a statement, right? Um, mm -hmm. And it could be Disney World, why go anywhere else? And it's a question, but yeah, it doesn't, it's clearly not asking you to answer me. Um, okay. Now, you could absolutely, let's go to that Nat Geo Nero thing. Um, but could there be another side to Rome's notorious devil? Um, yes, you could do it that way without it being genuinely like, please answer me. Um, uh, or you could even make it a statement, but could there be another side to Rome's notorious devil? Um, and that would be awesome, you know? But if, mm. if you have a piece before it's yours, before you're booked, and it has that specific of a punctuation you know how i was saying earlier you could you should feel free to like you know delete add change punctuation particularly for message or flow but um with with this 
it's it's just a good thing to get into the habit of don't riff yet don't do the jazz before you have the scales of they're telling you what to do you know they're saying this is a question mark so ask a question now of mm. course again in context it doesn't mean that if this were a commercial you would you would do the same thing but you would at least want to do the the one that i mentioned earlier with disney world that is uh, not a statement but a, a slight question a question that's like you know i'm not really asking it but why yeah. go anywhere else you know or why go anywhere else that that still an uplift but not a why go anywhere else you know um does that yeah, help I like all? Yeah, I like the straightforward questions. I think it it, it brings some intrigue, especially if it's I you know too. something with horror or something with a lot of emotion, drama. I like, it. and then almost a pause too, where you're waiting on an answer. Sometimes you know, yes, on the that's script. that's right, that's right. And you know, I think one of the reasons that it it can work as a genuine question, though, in this case, is. Um, Again, that element of surprise I talked about. And that's when you start getting into this kind of, you, I think you shouldn't make a blanket statement about how to treat questions because it's about yeah. what kind of question, in what context, what's the point yeah. really? Is it, is it asking you? Is it asking you to think about it? Is, you, is it uh, p uh, pointing out that, could you imagine that there was ever any good side to Hitler? <laughs> you know, that kind of thing is, is sort of like, to me, that's not rhetorical. That's, I mean, it is, but I, yeah. it would, it would have a little more drama if you mm -hmm. were genuinely asking, do you know what I mean? You make them think. Yeah. You want to make them think. Yes. Yes. That's that right. Way, that, way they're, that way they're engaged, right? Yeah. That's what we hope, you know? All right. Yeah. So when it comes to booking promo work, Carol, yeah. Yeah. Um, whether it be uh, radio work or, or one of these uh, uh, television things or something along that line, where do we go? What's the best source to go to? Uh, I'd, I'd imagine, you know, the, the TV work and all that sort of thing would probably be through the networks themselves you, have, you apply to and you send them demos, you find out who, or, or do you go through production companies? But then for the radio work, do you apply directly to radio stations? Or is there sort of one overall clearinghouse where people can go and choose from? Do you need to just book an agent and, a, and try and get an agent and an agent will tell you where to go? Ah! <laughs> the answer is yes. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Seriously. Uh, so uh, first of all, I would start with the Ross report. No, sorry. It's called the call sheet. This is really how old I am. It used to be called the Ross Report, like probably in the 70s or 80s. Um, so it's called uh, Call Sheet, and it's now become part of Backstage, uh, which is a, it started as a theatrical trade rag uh, for auditions for stage, uh, sometimes for touring companies. Uh, but, but then it became much more, and fairly quickly, much more about casting for television shows, for films, for uh, voiceovers, for dance even. Um, so that uh, little magazine, it, it's like the size of a, an old Reader's Digest, has uh, lists of casting directors and talent agents in every state in this country. And sometimes they'll have the UK as well, and maybe even other, you know, international companies. Um, that's just, to me, a good way to start with a demo to submit directly. If they allow it, you will see very clearly if it says, you know, Paradigm Talent Agency, there's a VO department, there's, there could even be a promo department. Um, and then it will say either the email address of the person or do not email or do not contact even sometimes. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, okay, next agent on the list, I, you know, someone will inevitably suggest or at least allow that you that you do that then there are uh uh these pay to play sites where if you upload your uh <laughs> he made the he made the uh i made I the mr yuck you... face <laughs> i made the mr yuck face yep and and there's there are good reasons for for that but it's really true that a lot of people get a lot of work. And the nice thing about pay-to-play sites is that they oftentimes can get repeat. You, you, they, they can be clearing houses to get 
repeat customers, um, not necessarily promo wise, but but in many different genres. But yes, I have a, a lot of issues with with them myself. I, I'm not um, uh, uh, yet on any except for very recently. I'm about to start to be on uh, voiceovers.com because it's new and I have hope that it might be different. <laughs> um, hope is a good thing. Hope is a nice thing. I was actually looking at voiceovers.net and it looks freaking great. It does. It looks they I feel as though they've taken they've taken this uh, nice survey of how it's worked in the past with other companies and what hasn't worked and and that they're they have some algorithms that seem a little more um, clear, clean and 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 direct. Um, and and that, garbage voice actors aren't getting on there. Right, you have they to audition. Have that's true, that's true. Um, Joe, that's I've, got a, I've got a quick question for you. Yeah, okay. But where can, we, uh, where can we find you? Where can we contact you? And where can we find all of the services uh -huh. that you offer to voice actors? Oh, that's great. Thank you for asking. But I wanted to just just finish that. Yes, you can also direct market to to uh, National Geo or or to even a, a company who does. In fact, sometimes it's easier, a good start to to direct market to online companies who do promos, but online promos. You know, the, these okay. the the advertisements are now so much cheaper uh, online for for many. So uh, so they will be more likely to. Uh, yeah. to hire outside and of just for, using an agent and for radio if you wanted to get into uh doing Same thing. radio imaging just go straight to the stations themselves i would now now i have an agent and sometimes they'll send me to um certainly radio jobs they'll they'll give you auditions for but a imaging less so but it still happens so i would say that the both in that case too agents and and the uh, again direct marketing yeah are there are there agents who deal solely with promos and nothing else? Yes, there are. Um, they're harder to find, and they're usually couched in, um, it, you know, it will say promo department, but. Oftentimes it will be a narration department and they haven't broken down for you. For example, I have uh, an agent C that has, you know, I have got in a sense, four agents working for me. One does commercial only, one does political only, one does narration only, and she happens to also do promos. So that's a mix. But there are other agencies I've been to and worked for who have within the narration department a promo. And, and some people even put their promo department in the commercial because it is a little, it does ride the fence, as I was saying earlier, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so I would just do some research for, uh, about that, like promo department, casting agents, uh, talent agents. But how do you find online promos? How do you find those kind of people? That you're oh, the casting people for them? Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's, what, do I, what do you type in Google? <laughs> yeah. You, you basically, I mean, some people are starting with LinkedIn, by the way, for, for yeah. online stuff. Um, yeah which is interesting. You just in the space bar, like you would the, the, you know, a Google search, uh, mm -hmm. just, just change the wording until something hits. It could oh. be online promos. It could be online advertising. It could be per, literally, you have to write the word promotional, uh, or voiceover promotional, or, you know, just any number of variations. Okay. And usually you'll, you'll get some hit, you know, okay. or more. I got it. Okay. So, Michael, to answer your question, um, I, I'm uh, at, should I just maybe write it? Or, or do you want to write it? It's, it's. Well, uh, we can, we can have it written down, but I'd like for you to, uh, to, to mention it uh, for everybody who might be watching on YouTube. Oh, later right. On, of course. You know, anybody else. <laughs> so, yeah, just let us know right. where we can find you. Okay. Um, so, I uh, am most reachable via coaching at carolmondavo.com so that's uh coaching and it's c-a-r-o-l m-o-n-d-a like monday without the y carol monda coaching at carol monda vo all one word carol monda vo.com you could also uh i have an, a, a gmail address it's coaching at my my name um no, I'm so sorry. That's not right. It's Carol Monda Coaching at Gmail. Sorry. <laughs> I use it less and less. 
Um, but I certainly, it will come to me the same. It's kind of connected. Um, uh, also. Website. Website, yes. It's uh, carolmondavio.com. Uh, but I would definitely put the HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash www dot because otherwise you, you'll get right to the uh, the uh, like a non secure version of it and I just never think that's a good idea so oh. making an https the s is what makes the difference um, that will give you a secure line and and uh, if you ever go to like my Facebook page for example um, which is Carol Mondavio or Twitter or something. Uh, if you see the link for my website, you can know that it's it's already, even though it doesn't say it all, it, it is already the HTTPS. So that's a one, you know, one safe way also to just click directly on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. Uh, it's pretty much always Carol Monda VO or, or I think on LinkedIn, it's just Carol Monda. Uh, so is that, is that something new or what? Where you say HTTP? Um, S? Yeah, well, yes. that's that's just the long version of any any uh, website any www now. right yeah. but, that's correct but uh but but it, it's okay. it's not new it's just that nobody nobody talks about the fact that oftentimes you will get http without the s right. and the s means secure oh, i just no, looked I up know. carol monda on on linkedin and she's the first one that popped up so yeah connected yeah <laughs> somebody's got their seo working well <laughs> there you go all right so we have uh, roughly about uh, 11 minutes until the recorded portion of the mic check is over um of course as anybody who stuck around with us before that doesn't mean that the mic check itself is over you're welcome to stay around and talk if you'd like but uh carol if you would like to select somebody maybe to do another read or uh, if you have anything else that you'd like to do the time is still yours Michael, Great, do thanks, a read. Michael. Michael, do a read. You yes. set this all up. You put this oh, all yeah, together. Michael. Do a read, yep. before, yeah. we, before we shut it down, do a read. Yeah. That's okay. That's okay. Right. Oh, well, oh which, uh, which script? Uh, I'll well, leave that up to you guys. Which script? Oh, I want you to do Frank like FM. You want to do Frank FM? Frank yeah. FM as well. I want you to do Frank FM. Excellent. I want you to do Big Bad Rock Jock. <laughs> That's great. Okay. Mm. Edit the script and change. Michael it doing a rock jock. This is going to be your best boss. Oh, man. Give me your best boss <laughs> FM rock jock, baby. Uh oh. <laughs> All right. Well, well, well let's back. see. Let's give it a go. We've got all the hits from the 80s, 90s, and whatever. You're listening to Frank FM, today's best rock with John the Rolling Stone McGaffey. What are you saying? We can't hear you. Pump up the jam with Frank FM. Waking you up every day. That's so good, really. That's really <laughs> good. Um, and you can go even further. You know, sometimes because when you've got a hard sell or even just a high energy sell, it's easy to keep it in the same place. And it's really totally fine. In fact, oftentimes you will find that they love that if you just keep it all the same, just drive through with the same, you know, idle in the engine. Um, but you could probably also do, you know, you could still uh, separate moments and see some transitions with the, for example, after McGaffey, it's like, what are you saying? You know, you could almost like imagine yourself taking one second to, to hear some wimp over there, like thinking he's a rocker and you're like, challenge it you know it, it could be a new moment or a higher stake of like okay. you know um uh, the only people who who matter are, are people who are loud you know that sort of thing <laughs> um okay. so, and and, and so, that will then lead to the pumping up and etc so that uh i should add a break there like what are you saying should be something a little different yeah, I think okay. so. I, th okay. I think it is. There are lots of opportunities to 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 make breaks anywhere almost because um, one of the things I love about radio stuff like this is that almost every line could be its own. You wouldn't even have to do other lines pretty much. I mean, not not really. What are you saying is not on its own as an island, but it still is true that that many of these could be just, be, you know, their own little beautiful gems so but yes i think i think that would be it's the first time again that we're inviting or in or interacting with uh the audience so to me it merits something new okay okay let's give it a try mm -hmm. 
We've got all the hits from the 80s, 90s, and whatever. You're listening to Frank FM, today's best rock with John the Rolling Stone McGaffey. What are you saying? We can't hear you. Pump up the jam with Frank FM, waking you up every day. Yeah. Now, see, <laughs> I don't know that that was... Um, Is that not different enough? No, I thought that that was... It was well, it was exactly what uh, what I was asking for. And also, you kind of got the sense of what, what I sort of said that I didn't directly say <laughs> do this. But you, you then kept it building um, after the what are you saying? We can't hear you. It's like that gave you the energy to, to, to say pop up the jab even more. <laughs> usually not good at this one. This kind of read isn't for Frank. I mean, for Michael, but yet. Yeah. He, oh, wow. he, killed, he killed it. <laughs> He, he did, it. he absolutely. I would never yeah. have known Michael. You know, he's Michael. This is oh, definitely scary. not a Michael Reed. <laughs> no, this is definitely not a me Reed. Oh, that's so why, Michael, that's why I wanted you to do it. Read. Thank yeah. you. But I'm you know so what, glad. you know what, Michael? I'd love you to hear, do it one more time, but the, uh, the what are you saying we can't hear you? Go full on zone three. I mean, get right back into the corner of your booth and just scream it. Zone three, I don't know. Cool. All right, we'll give it a try. We'll give it a go. All right. But what if we do like, uh, we can't hear you? Yeah. Something like that. Sort of like, okay, uh, okay. more mocking. More mocking. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Kind of, kind right. of like uh, the Ghostbusters. Right. Yeah. We've got all the hits from the 80s, 90s, and whatever. You're listening to Frank FM, today's best rock with John the Rolling Stone McGaffey. What are you saying? We can't hear you. Pump up the jams with Frank FM, waking you up every day. Of course, I wouldn't do the clap, but still. <laughs> yeah, but that's how into it he was, which is great. Yeah, right, right. I, I love that because you can always take that out if it's if it's not if you're not on a word. <laughs> if it's know? not too close, yeah, we're yeah, overlapping. Yeah. yeah, exactly. No, that was really great, and you know, um, I also think that this time you you made a uh, a wise choice in playing even more with whatever i mean yep. that is his to me that's hysterical the 80s 90s and whatever i, I don't even know how i would say it but but <laughs> I, I just love the, uh, the fun of that um and you really you had more fun you know, no, thank you general. thank you it's always good to get out of your comfort zone that's why i asked for a lot of challenges yeah. here that always helps yeah nice. so what is your what is what would you say is your go-to or 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 set of go-to genres <laughs> Uh, genres. Um, I've got most of my training in commercial work. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's usually just been commercials, but promos are something that have always been this mystery to me that I've always wanted to try. Yeah. And I feel like my voice would fit that a little bit better than Absolutely. most other commercial work I've done, even yes. though I, I still feel really confident in my reads in general. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think that, uh, that promos really do sort of stick out to me. I, I love the storytelling aspect of it. Yeah. Yeah, like I was looking at the Nat Geo Nero one and thinking that would be that would be a lot of fun to try to do. Yes. Go for it. Go yes. for it. Sure. Okay. Go for it. <laughs> okay. He's known as the Antichrist, the emperor who burned Rome to the He's known as the Antichrist, the emperor who burned Rome to build a palace worthy of a king. He's attributed with the number 666. The numbers the New Testament gives Satan. He's remembered for one great disaster. But could there be another side to Rome's notorious devil? That's how I should have read it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. We're yeah, all snowflakes. Fine. Don't, oh, don't, sorry. don't discount yourself. Yeah. That's right. Don't don't uh, don't that's ban right. yourself. Um, okay, that was very good. And really, honestly, I think you really uh, have have a lot of uh, natural just sound for for promos and a lot of different kind of promos. You know, uh, some people only do that sort of like uh, the 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 wrestling kind of feel or the the monster truck kind of yeah. gravitas. You know. What's the gravitas? That? Gravitas. The gravitas. Yes, yes, gravitas. And if if it were a commercial, it would be considered hard sell, which I still use as a you know as a phrase for for that kind of Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Um, but I think the nice thing is you've got some air and texture that you can that you play with and that can be great for 
something very soft and sort of sad or something that's very sensational and, and you know, over the top drama, um, you know, without it being loud, like the radio spot that, that you did so well. So, so I think it's true. You, you have some, some great uh, chops for this. Um, yeah, I just wish that I had more opportunities to actually give it a try. I know it. It is true that <laughs> promos are less. Uh, They're less accessible than many other. They are, they especially are. commercial work. Commercial work is like uh, almost a the introductory section. If I'm if I'm understanding that correctly, it's yes. it, it's practically like every voice actor's first introduction. Of course, there are some who really luck out and uh, you know get to go right into what it is they want to do, but mm -hmm. um, that one really seems like. Uh, uh, the, the commercial really seems like it's just so broad and there's just so much of it that that's the easiest to access. When it comes to to to, uh, to promos, there's, from what I understand, project per project, a little bit more money in it because, I mean, that's how you're trying to sell something new. Um, but that's why they close it off to more of a, a tight-knit group, people that um, either producers or agents are very comfortable with working with, you know, they, they, they know their, the, that, that particular actor's style and their, their ability to deliver the script. So that's right. That's so true. And yet, uh, if you think about it statistically, there's far more narration than commercial. Um, oh yeah. 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 Like e-learning and corporate yeah, narration and the like. That's right. Exactly. Um, but, but it is true that in the commercial world, whether, whether you're, um, talking about you know um a political ad which is really not a commercial but it's called an ad you know um <laughs> the the promo does does have a sort of a um, you know it's it like rents a duplex in greece for seven months out of the year whereas you know so, so there's less of it but there there is more um uh, more of a uh, because of that focused way to uh market yourself with with the the networks that do the promos also i i don't think i finished with that question um uh, but also with agents and and even sometimes you know uh the pay to play sites also there's a guy named um david lyerly l y e r l y um he is he was an agent he he may have gone back to it I, it's been a couple of years but he was an agent for many many years and then he just started to focus on promos only and he's a he's a coach he also helps make promo demos um and uh, and so do the schools i work for you know edge studio and global voice acting academy and and the voice shop but uh david was for so long focused only on that that i i think he'd be someone to to look up uh if you if you were interested in making a demo at the very least um okay. and getting some extra coaching um and uh there's also, um, you know, so many like Randy Thomas, who is, if you guys don't oh. know, she's a, she's a live announce person, but she also does a lot of promos. She's so great. she is, she is really great. great. Yeah. Well, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut you off real quick. This is where yep. we're going to end the recorded portion of the mic check. Thank you, everyone, very much for joining. And Carol, thank you so much for all of the information that you shared with us, the scripts, for the feedback and the info. It was all amazing. Once again, you can find her at HTTPS, don't forget the S, carolmondavo.com. You can find all of the information to contact her there. All right, everybody, we'll see you next week. Join us every Monday for free script practice. You can also find the mic check on Facebook and Twitter. If you liked what you saw, then subscribe for more.